A colossal force has been holding Alaska's crust down for millennia. Now, as its glaciers vanish, that pressure is suddenly lifting. Scientists warn this is no slow motion change. It's a violent rebound, shifting tectonic stress onto faults locked for centuries. Could the melting ice really trigger a megaquake and unleash tsunamis within minutes? The mechanism is real, the evidence mounting, and the countdown has already begun. Glacial Isostatic Adjustment GIA transforms a melting glacier from a passive victim of climate change into a mechanical force with the power to reshape continents. For thousands of years, the Columbia and Hubbard glaciers acted as anchors, pressing down on Alaska's crust with unimaginable weight. As these giants shrink, the ground beneath them doesn't just relax. It springs upward, first in a sharp, elastic snap, then more slowly as the deeper mantle flows to fill the gap. This isn't a minor rise. In some places, the land is lifting by more than an inch every year, fast enough to leave tide gauges recording falling sea levels even as the ocean climbs elsewhere. The process is anything but gentle. The crust, once compressed, now rebounds like a loaded spring suddenly released. Scientists track this uplift with high-precision GPS, watching the Earth rise in real time as the ice retreats. The Columbia Glacier alone has lost over 12 miles of length since 1980, stripping away billions of tons of ice. The Hubbard Glacier, too, is rapidly thinning. Every ton of ice that disappears lightens the load, allowing the crust to flex and shift. Alaska's unique setting makes this effect especially intense. The Pacific Plate, grinding northward at two inches per year, twice the rate of California's San Andreas Fault, meets a crust that's suddenly rebounding upward. This combination of horizontal tectonic motion and vertical springback creates a zone of shifting stress, where the ground is literally being pulled in two directions at once. GIA is not just a background process. It's the hidden engine driving Alaska's seismic future. Finite element models now put hard numbers to what was once only theory. When researchers feed decades of glacier loss and GPS-recorded uplift into computer simulations, the results are striking. In the heart of the Yakutat region, stress changes on faults aren't subtle. They exceed one bar in the most vulnerable segments. That's more than enough to alter the odds of a major earthquake, according to decades of seismological research. The same models pinpoint uplift rates topping 30 millimeters per year near the fastest thinning glaciers, matching the highest GPS readings in Alaska. The sensitivity of these models depends on the deep Earth's viscosity, a measure of how quickly the mantle flows to fill the space left by melting ice. When the mantle is more fluid, closer to 10 to the 18th Pascal seconds, the stress transfer happens in years, not centuries. If the mantle is stiffer, the adjustment lingers, spreading risk over generations. No matter the scenario, the uplift and stress hotspots cluster along the very faults that threaten coastal towns. Stress maps from these simulations light up the Yakutat microplate and adjacent splay faults as the most reactive zones. The greatest modeled unclamping aligns with areas of rapid ice retreat, confirming that glacial loss is not just raising the land but actively shifting the tectonic balance. These calculations don't predict the exact timing of the next megaquake. But they reveal a landscape primed for sudden release, with stress building fastest where the ice is vanishing most rapidly. The Yakutat microplate sits at the heart of Alaska's seismic danger zone, wedged between the Pacific Plate and the North American continent. Unlike a single, clean fault, this microplate acts as a tangled knot of tectonic stress. Satellite mapping and paleoseismic trenching reveal that stress is not spread evenly here. It concentrates along hidden weaknesses, particularly where the plate boundary breaks into a web of splay faults. These secondary faults branch upward from the main subduction zone, running alarmingly close to the surface and to populated coastlines. Montague Island, 
perched directly above one of these splay fault systems, holds a geological record that reads like a warning. Sediment cores and diatom analysis document at least three meters of sudden uplift during the 19 e Great Alaska earthquake and similar surges in prehistoric events stretching back over 4,000 years. Each time the island's land level snapped upward, draining coastal lagoons and leaving behind sharp boundaries in the sediment. A permanent signature of violent crustal movement. During the 1964 quake, the Patton Bay Splay Fault System delivered an astonishing 11 meters of uplift on Montague the largest measured anywhere in the region. These splay faults don't just break the surface, they act as rapid highways for energy release. When the main megathrust locks and stress builds, the splay faults can rupture, causing the land to lurch upward in seconds. The paleoseismic record shows these ruptures recur with unsettling regularity, often coinciding with Alaska's greatest earthquakes. Where the Yakutat microplate presses against these faults, the ground is primed for sudden, catastrophic movement. The architecture of Alaska's crust is not just complex, it's loaded, mapped, and ready to snap. When a major earthquake strikes coastal Alaska, the shaking is only the beginning. The true danger comes from the water, a wall of it, racing up the fjords with almost no warning. In these narrow, steep-sided inlets, Tsunami waves don't just travel, they amplify, growing taller and more violent as they funnel toward the head of the bay. The physics are merciless. As the wave enters shallower water and the fjord narrows, energy is squeezed upward, turning a modest surge into a mountain of water. History offers chilling proof. In 1958, Latuya Bay experienced the most extreme tsunami ever recorded. A magnitude 7.8 earthquake shook loose a massive rock slide, sending 40 million cubic yards of rock into the bay. The resulting wave shot up the opposite slope, stripping trees to a height of 1,720 feet, higher than the Empire State Building. Survivors described the water as a roaring, unstoppable force, arriving seconds after the quake. The threat is not confined to the past. In 2015, a landslide above Icy Bay unleashed a wave that surged 100 feet high, scouring the shoreline and erasing entire patches of forest. More recently, in 2024, a collapse at South Sawyer Glacier triggered a local tsunami captured on video, the wave racing across the fjord in minutes. In each case, the time between quake or landslide and the arrival of the first wave was less than 30 minutes sometimes much less. For residents of coastal villages, that leaves almost no time to react. These are not distant hypotheticals. They are the direct result of Alaska's unique combination of steep terrain, deep water, and unstable slopes, all made more hazardous by the retreat of glaciers. The next great earthquake could send a cascade of tsunamis barreling through these fjords, turning seconds of shaking into a deadly, fast arriving flood. Every millimeter of Alaska's rising ground is tracked by a web of high precision GPS stations, each one logging vertical movement with pinpoint accuracy. These instruments deployed by teams from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and Scripps record the crust's upward surge as glaciers melt away. Meanwhile, satellites in the GRACE constellation sweep overhead measuring subtle shifts in Earth's gravity to map exactly where ice is vanishing fastest. When the satellite data matches the GPS trends on the ground, scientists know their models are capturing the real pace of change. Out at sea, ocean bottom seismometers and pressure sensors listen for tiny earthquakes and sudden shifts deep beneath the fjords. These three gradients, uplift, gravity change, and micro-seismicity form a live stress map of Alaska's crust. Together, they turn the region's invisible danger into hard numbers, revealing where the next snap could happen. Warnings about Alaska's megaquake risk don't just come from seismic models. 
They echo through policy debates and community testimony. Chris Rollins at the University of Alaska points out, there's what's called the elastic effect, then a prolonged effect from mantle flowing back upwards under the vacated space. Yet translating this science into action faces stubborn obstacles. Federal funding for glacial hazard research has been inconsistent since 2010, with agencies gridlocked over priorities. Industry groups, worried about panic and insurance fallout, have pressured for silence. Meanwhile, declassified Navy hydrophone logs, SOSUS records, have quietly filled gaps in civilian monitoring, confirming stress patterns beneath retreating glaciers. Yakutat Tlingit elders describe decades of unusual rumblings and shifting shorelines, their oral histories now aligning with GPS and microquake data. The science is urgent, but so are the voices demanding that risk isn't hidden or ignored. Over the past century, Southern Alaska's land has rebounded by more than 30 millimeters per year in some regions, a rate confirmed by GPS and satellite gravity data. The 19 Tinchatsalul Bainane, the 19th city, or Great Alaska Earthquake and the Latuya Bay Mega Tsunami show that seismic and tsunami threats here are not theoretical. Research now documents that glacial isostatic adjustment is transferring more than one bar of stress to locked faults beneath the Yakutat microplate and coastal splay faults. Yet scientists cannot predict exactly when this accumulated strain will trigger another major quake. Funding delays leave instrument coverage incomplete and key offshore fault lines remain only partially mapped. What is certain? Melting glaciers have shifted the timing and location of seismic risk, amplifying hazards for coastal communities. As one expert noted, melting ice does not cause Alaska's earthquakes. It focuses them. The geological clock is ticking, and the forces at work are real, measurable, and accelerating.